hey guys welcome to ss unitex social this side and this is continuation of azure databricks tutorial so before going forward in this video if you haven't watched the last two videos of this video series so i would strongly recommend to watch those videos so in the first video we have discussed about the introduction of the azure databricks and in the second video we have discussed how we can create the azure databricks service inside the azure portal so let's get started with today's video so in this video we will be understanding about the top level concept those we are going to use inside the azure databricks so what is those so first that is the workspace so we have to understand about the workspace first so the workspace is an environment for accessing all your databricks assets so what it means so this is the place where we will be accessing all the databricks assets and those assets could be your notebook libraries dashboards and experiments so experiments is nothing but the ml flow and into the folder and provide access to data object and computational resources so this is the one place where all these objects we can create whatever we want to develop we can develop it here so this is the one place and as i told you for the notebooks so this is a web based interface to documents that contain runnable command visualization and narrative text so whatever we want to do like all the codings or the development everything we have to do inside the notebooks only and here we can use the different different languages by which we can write our code those could be python scala r sql languages it is supporting next is the folders so folders are nothing but it is used to maintain the grouping and hierarchy so let's assume if you are working in a project and that is the erp based project and inside the erp we are having different modules like the sales module purchase module and inventory module so we don't want to keep all our development in a single folder we want to create the different folders and by which we want to keep our development there so for example our base folder will be your project name maybe the p1 and inside the p1 we can create the different folders for managed all these things so inside that we can call this as sales then purchase and after that we can have the inventory so like we can create these folders and whatever the development is needed if that is based on the sales we can write and create the notebooks under the sales or the purchase and inventory so depending on that we can manage next is the library so what is the library so library is nothing but it is a package of code available inside the notebooks or job running on your cluster and databricks runtime includes many libraries and you can also create your own library so you can simply understand it is having the predefined libraries inside the databricks whenever it is required in your code you can simply use those libraries and here we will also see the option for creating the new libraries so we can create those libraries and in future we can utilize those libraries so libraries you can simply understand it is something like the functions inside the sql server so it will be going to create a single time and we can use that function in the future coding as well so this is very similar to the libraries next is the ml flow so ml flow is again nothing but the collection of the ml flow runs for the training a machine learning model so ml flow is going to use for that so this is the first thing that i wanted to discuss about the workspace let me quickly go in the browser and here inside the workspace as we can see we have the option for the shared and users so let me go in the shared and inside the shared we can create the notebook libraries folders and ml flows so let me create a new notebook and while creating a no new notebook it is asking to create a cluster so as of now we have not created the cluster so let me leave this and let me call this as test and click on create so it will be going to create a new notebook but that notebook will not be attached with any cluster so we cannot run anything here now 
here in the top side we can see by default it is selected the Python language but you can also select the SQL Scala or so any one of these language you can select it from here or you can select it from here as well so like these two places by which we can select it now let me discuss the next concept which is the data so inside the data it is very important so data bricks file system so what is this so databricks file system is a distributed file system mounted into the azure databricks workspace and available on azure databricks clusters so simply we can say it is the storage of the file and in our scenario because we are going to use this inside the azure so azure blob storage will be created behind the scene while we are creating the clusters so don't worry if that is not very clear i'll be going to see that in our upcoming videos so as of now you can only understand the database file system is a system or the collection of the files those can be available on your azure blob storage so that is the azure database file system next is the database so database as i told you we can also create the databases and the tables inside the azure databricks so this is the same thing if you are having knowledge inside the sql server then you can understand like the database and the tables are nothing but database is the collection of all the objects and the table will be going to have one object inside the database so this is something like that let me quickly go inside the portal and let me show you about the data menu that you can see here so once we click on that then we can see the data explorer and here we can write our sql queries like here we have not created any table at yet but we can create the table so that we'll see in our upcoming videos as of now you can only understand like this is the data pane where we can integrate or your mount your azure databricks blob stories so databricks will be accessing the blob storage directly from here now next is the compute so compute is very important as the cluster is the backbone of the Azure Databricks so what is the cluster so a cluster is a computation resources and configuration on which you can run your notebooks and jobs so there is two type of clusters available inside the Azure Databricks one is the all-purpose cluster second is the job cluster so like these two type of clusters are available and we can write our code that is written inside the notebook by running inside the clusters so this is very important so I'll be going to record a separate video where we'll see detailed this explanation about the clusters so don't worry for now you can only understand inside the compute we are having two type of clusters all-purpose cluster and job compute cluster next is the Databricks runtime. So Databricks runtime this is also very important. So you have to understand a set of core component that run on the cluster managed by the Databricks. Databricks offers several type of the runtimes. So we can simply understand it is a set of core component that runs on the cluster. So it is going to run inside the cluster and Databricks will be managing this. So Databricks runtime is nothing but the core component of the cluster next as I told you it is having several types so the first type is the databricks runtime with the conda so this is one type of the runtime second data bricks runtime for the ML which is for the machine learning purpose next is databricks runtime for the genomics next databricks light so these are the runtimes available inside the databricks now the authentication so authentication part is very important because here we can provide the access let's assume if we are having 10 developers in your project and all those are working in the same project so on that project you can simply providing the access as per your need so for example like the we are having the junior developers so we don't want to provide the access we will be restricting the access for all the resources so we can restrict by using the authentication so it is having three type of the authentications the first one is the user so a unique individual who access to the system is user second is the group so it is a collection of users so 
we can provide the access to the group whatever the users are available on that group will be inheriting the access from that group last is the access control list so this is very important so a list of permissions attached to the workspace cluster job tables and ml flows so we can understand it will be going to pro provide the access on the workspace level cluster level job level table level and ml flows so on these level we can provide the access for any individual so an acl specifies which user or system processes are guarantee access to the object as well as what operation are allowed on that asset for example if we are having a notebook and we can create the notebook but we don't have access to delete the notebook so that type of access we can add inside the acl so that we'll see in our upcoming videos don't worry for now you can only understand we are having three different type of the access one on the user label so that will be on the individual user second is the on group so if we are having a group and under that we are having multiple users so we can provide the access and third one is the access control list so we can restrict on the object level like what type of access we want to provide so i hope guys you have understand about the top level concepts inside the azure databricks so thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video thank you so much